The King and Queen of Malaysia paid a visit to Norfolk today to give the royal seal of approval to the country's huge investment in Lotus. The royal visit coincides with Malaysia's partnership with Lotus, which is boosting its domestic car production and reviving the Lotus involvement in Formula One. It's not often royalty comes to Heffel in Norfolk, but today Lotus was honoured with some special guests. The King and Queen of Malaysia unveiled a new engine developed by Lotus for Proton. It was a family outing for the royals. Two of their four children were with them. The couple had been married for 13 years. Both enjoy sports, so today's visit was one they both would have looked forward to. Proton is a Malaysian company and in 1996 they acquired Lotus. Today's visit gave the royals their first chance to see how it all works here. It's historically been, uh, been, uh, been a strong relationship between Proton and Lotus and I believe uh, the new, the new let's say, the management, the new strategy that Lotus is going towards to, to hopefully to build in the next couple of years, I believe it's going to strengthen the relationship between Proton and Lotus and to maybe use more synergies, especially in the engineering uh, field. <laughs> Soon it was time for the king to try out the new Lotus Evora. So was he impressed with the sports car? Oh, I think he likes it. Uh, the, the first impression, <laughs> I, I can see on, uh, on his face that he likes the car. After his spin around the track, the royals continue to take in some of the sights. We've been told the Queen was off to Sprouston Stately home to relax, while the King enjoyed a spot of golf. Dawn Gerber, BBC Look East, Norfolk. The political bandwagon rolls into Manchester this weekend as the Conservatives gather for their last conference before the general election. The Tories have a big lead in the opinion polls and this week they got the backing of the Sun newspaper. So is the next election already in the bag? Here's Andrew Sinclair. It certainly isn't and the Conservative High Command is terrified of the party being seen as swaggering and complacent next week. Now the latest poll gives the Conservatives 37% and Labour 30%. The Tories have been in the lead for the last two years now, bouncing around the late 30s and early 40s. But go back to the year before Tony Blair won. The Conservatives are on the same as Labour is now, 30%. But look at Labour, 49%. And they stayed in the late 40s, early 50s, most of the time and that's why the election is not in the bag to be sure of success the conservatives need poll ratings in the upper 40s all the time why because they lost so badly last time round. The task facing the Conservatives is very, very considerable. In order to get a majority of two under the new boundaries for the new constituencies in the next election, it looks likely that they'll have to get a, a swing of just under 7%. If they were to, to achieve that, they would have had to achieve the second biggest swing in 60 years. So so, what will happen in our region next time round? On election night, one of the key seats to watch will be Waveney in Suffolk. It's held by Bob Blizzard of Labour with a majority of 5,900, and it's been Labour for 12 years. But the swing needed for the Conservatives to win here is exactly the same as the one they need to win power. So, is public opinion moving their way? Kim Riley's spent the day there. They've been sprucing up the Edwardian seaside resort of Lowestoft, home to half the population of Waveney. But beneath the surface of our most easterly town, pockets of real poverty and unemployment figures among the worst in the region. A lot rests on the new industry of offshore wind. We've got a new operation starting up um, for the Greater Gabbard offshore wind farm, which will increase employment by around 100 people, which bring some, the total number employed within the port to around 1,600 people, which means that there's a significant income to the local economy, probably around £40 million a year. At the Marina Theatre, they've been keeping prices down in the recession. The result, no shortage of bums on seats. There's so many people, you know, they want some entertainment, want to be cheered up, and they're coming to the theatre, and we're finding actually in, in this recession that people are coming more than ever before. I found plenty of dissatisfaction with the Labour government here, but what about their sitting MP? OK, yeah, can't really say anything nasty about you. Are you going to vote for him? I don't vote. So you're not happy with the government, but you're happy with Bob Blizzard? Yes, yes. yeah, definitely, yes. yes. That's it. You've got it in one. He seems to sort things out for people. Yes, I think he's very good. He's good for most of but Labour Party on the whole. If you're talking about the country, well, that's another thing. Tory candidate, 48-year-old chartered surveyor Peter Aldous, is fighting the seat for the second time. I wouldn't want to be overconfident. We've got an awful lot of work to do. It's a challenge that I'm enjoying. And, yes, I'm, I'm going to 
to give it my best shot. And the view of the man who won Lowestoft against the odds in 1959 and held it for 28 years. It's bound to be tough. If you've got a 6% swing to get it back, you've got to work very hard. But uh, Peter Alders has been a candidate for the last election and now for this election. So he's reasonably well known. And I think this will count in his favour. The polls look good for Conservative prospects here, but to use the well-worn cliché, there's only one poll that matters. Kim Riley, BBC Look East, Lowestoft. And the politics show will be live in Manchester this Sunday at 12 o'clock here on BBC One, and I'll be reporting from the conference all of next week. Andrew, thank you very much indeed. Now, Lowestoft is famous for many things. It's beaches, the fishing industry, of course, and that giant wind turbine. But now Britain's most easterly spot is also building a reputation as a training base for some of the best gymnasts in the world. Let's go live to Lowestoft now and Kevin Birch. Hello Susie, welcome to the Waveney Gymnastics Centre where we're watching this open training session with the Canadian men's team. They're here getting ready for the World Gymnastic Championships in London in a fortnight next week. The Great Britain men's team will be here too. Let's have a chat with one of the Canadian gymnasts, Nathan. Um, you've been around the world, Nathan. How good are the facilities here? Well, so far they've been absolutely perfect. I mean, as you said, we're getting ready for the World Championships later in this month, which are in London, and this place has exactly everything that a gymnast could need when preparing for a competition like that. And someone was saying that the equipment here is exactly the same as you'll have in London, and that's crucial. Yeah, it is. It takes a bit of time to get used to uh, different bounces on the floor and on the high bar and things like that, so it's been great that we've had this chance to come into this gym and get used to stuff before we get over there. I have to say, watching you, it's incredible, a skill and dedication. Yeah, yeah well, we, we've been training for quite some time, so we're, we're kind of used to it now. But, yeah, we appreciate everything that the club has done for us and, and the parents and little kids coming in to watch and, and some schools as well, so it's been awesome. Someone tells me, while you've been in Lower Stuff, you already have tested lower stuff fish and chips is that right it is it is correct we have and they were they were great we went down to uh the town center and we had had one blue dolphin or something like that they were great yeah <laughs> good man well, well done nathan you're going to get on i know so good luck and good luck in the championship thank you very much well from gymnastics to uh, the gallops and racing new market tomorrow hosts britain's richest race day with a million pounds on offer one of the favorites is society rock owned by 84 year old simon gibson Tom Williams has been to see them. It's early. Despite the 6 a.m. start, rush hour at Pegasus Stables, 24 hours before the big day. Time to stretch the legs, take a stroll on the heath before a quick workout, but nothing too stressful this morning. The first group we have coming is uh, Zidane and Society Rock. Now Society Rock's running for a million on Britain's most lucrative race day. Likes the sound of that. His owner has found a beauty, and at 84, about time. In three outings, his two-year-old's already enjoyed a couple of victories. Wonderful when the horse wins. Absolutely wonderful. You, you can't believe the, what, what feeling you get as you see your horse just getting to the front. And as I live in Newmark, and I've been here for 60 years, a lot of friends I've got, and they're all very excited about this horse. Society Rock won the best part of a quarter of a million pounds at Newmarket two weeks ago. Tomorrow, it could be rather more. But it's not all about the money. You no, know, he just loves his racing. You know, it gives him a great day out, it gives him something to look forward to. And when I give him um, a large bill at the end of every month, it gives him something to moan about as well. So, uh, but Simon, you know, he comes to the yard, gets involved, and... Um, you know, fortunately, he's got a good horse to enjoy. To win the Tattersall's Time 4 million, his colt will have to run faster and further than ever before. And unsurprisingly, the purse has attracted all the big guns. To win a million, million pounds is uh, everyone's dream, and, uh, but I'm a realist and, uh, you know, <laughs> we've got to win it first. What would you do with it? Well, I think I might have another horse. So that's one thing. And uh, I'm a b very big person with charities and things, so I, I, I'd probably give some money away in charity. Society Rock keeps me going, and I just pray and hope that he'll have a good run tomorrow. Simon Gibson ending that report from Tom Williams. Remember, Football League goal action tomorrow after match of the day, Sunday in our bulletin, and then on the website from Monday. As for grassroots football, confirmation today that more games have been called off because of the weather. In Lower Stoft, they said there'll be no matches played because it's too dry and too dangerous. From Lower Stoft, back to you in the studio.